Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be going through the whole of Edexcel GCSE Chemistry Separates content. So this is all the stuff you only need to know if you're doing separate science. If you'd like to follow along with this video, over my website you can download my notes and my flashcards. Ok, so transition metals are the ones right in the middle of the periodic table. And these are all of our typical metals, so we have things like copper and gold and iron. So they're the most common metals that we use all the time. And the reason we use them all the time is because they're really hard, strong and shiny. They're also really good conductors of both electricity and heat. Now transition metals also have very high melting points. And they have high densities. Now another really useful property of transition metals is that they make really good catalysts. And this means that they can speed up chemical reactions without actually being used in the reaction itself. Now, you also need to be aware that transition metals form colourful compounds. You don't need to memorise all of these colours and what every single metal makes, but you just need to be aware that they do form colourful compounds. For example, iron oxide, which is rust, is a bright orange. Now, corrosion is when metals react with oxygen in the air, and water is a catalyst for this. So again, let's use iron as an example. If you leave an iron now outside in the rain, it rusts really quickly because water is just speeding up this reaction. Now there are two ways we can prevent corrosion. The first way is by putting a barrier between the oxygen and the metal. So this is the barrier method. So this could be as simple as painting it or even covering it in oil. The second method is the sacrificial method. And this is when we cover the metal we want to save with a more reactive metal. So the oxygen reacts with the more reactive metal on the outside instead of the metal we're covering it with. Even if some of the covering has scratched off, the oxygen will still only react with the really reactive metal. Now, we looked at titrations back in the unit chemical changes, but now for the separates content we need to take it a bit further. We need to look at titration calculations. Let's look at a question. It takes 25 centimetres cubed of 0.1 moles per decimetre cubed sulfuric acid to neutralise 30 centimetre cubes of sodium hydroxide solution. Find the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. OK, so we've been given quite a lot of numbers and quite a lot of information here. So the first thing we want to do is write down all the numbers we've been given for each chemical. So the first one is sulfuric acid. So we've been given its volume, which is 25 centimetres cubed. And we've also been given its concentration, which is 0 0.1 moles per decimetre cubed. Now they've also told us some things about the sodium hydroxide. They've told us the volume which is 30 centimetres cubed, but they want us to find the concentration. There are two equations for concentration, and I've put the one we need down below. Concentration can be found by dividing mass over volume or moles over volume. When we're working out titration calculations, we need to use the moles over volume one. The first thing we're going to do is find out how many moles of sulfuric acid we have. So to do this, we need to times the concentration by the volume. So we want to do 0.1 times the volume. Now the volume given is 25 centimetre cubed but we need the volume in decimetre cubed so we need to divide it by a thousand so we'll end up with 0 0.025 and if you times these together we get 0 0.0025 moles. So that's how many moles of sulfuric acid we have. Now hopefully you remember that we can use the balanced equation to figure out how many moles of sodium hydroxide we have. So let's use the numbers used to balance the equation. So we have a 1 here and a 2 here. So this means we have double the number of moles for sodium hydroxide than we do for sulfuric acid. So to find the moles of sodium hydroxide we just need to times this number by 2. So that gets us 0 0.005 moles. Now the final step is to use the concentration equation to find the concentration of the sodium hydroxide and we just need to divide the moles by the volume. So we have our 0 0.005 moles divided by the volume and again the volume has to be in decimeter cubed so we divide it by 1000 so 0 0.03 and this equals 0 0.167 moles per decimeter cubed and this is the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. Now, molar volume is how much space one mole of gas takes up. 
So here is the equation down below. Molar volume can be found by dividing the volume of the gas by the moles. And this is always going to be 24 centimetre cubed at room temperature and pressure. So for any gas at room temperature and pressure, it will take up 24 centimetre cubed. Now atom economy is the percentage of the reactants that have been turned into useful products. So obviously in a chemical reaction, we make things that we don't necessarily use. They're not useful. We can calculate atom economy to see how much waste we're producing. And this is found by the useful products relative mass divided by the total products relative mass and then times in the answer by 100. If this video helped with your chemistry revision, please subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have.